Hello chaps and chapettes, how's it going? Screezilla here and I hope you're all well and welcome to a little video on naval aiming and uh, just, just a really how-to. So first of all I just want to show you what I've actually got on here because this will be relevant later on in the video. Um, so I'm going to take out the Vondertan um, just because it's a little bit easier to show with the battleship and it's a little bit more exciting. So we're going to take it out for a test sail and we are going to... Uh, do, 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 do. So race there. So, okay, let's take it out for a t test sail in its current configuration. So we've got the improved um, improved optics, so the improved um, uh, rangefinder. That's the word I'm looking for, rangefinder. Uh, I'm going to switch to sap quickly. And we're actually going to switch to our secondary guns here. So we're going to switch to our secondary guns for this first target. So if you want to know how to switch guns, it's Alt and 1, 2 and 3. 3 is your AA d defense, so that will select your AA guns. Of course, the Vondertan, being a World War One ship, effectively has a couple of machine guns. Uh, Alt 2 is your secondaries, and these are your your, your, side, uh, your smaller caliber guns uh, all across the side here. Uh, so, Got the word for it. The name has escaped me, and that's really, really annoying me. Uh, so, so these are the smaller caliber guns, and these are useful for destroyers and smaller ships, for instance. So, uh, if you're fighting a uh, little patrol boat, you can use that. Absolutely, to block it out of resistance. Anyway, we'll get that one out of the way, and we'll talk about the rangefinder and actually how to aim. So, we're going to be aiming at the destroyer over there. So, first of all, we want to actually select it. Now, controls. You've got your options for choosing your layout. Um, for weaponry, I think it is. There we go. Um, you've got the selection of the the uh, what to use to select. Uh, whereabouts is it? Somewhere in here. Somewhere in here. I should have done this beforehand. Um, might be common. There we go. Common. Lock target. So lock target whatever you want to change it to, select it to that. Uh, and generally what I would say as well, just as a useful one for naval, is put control and lock target for manual, for, for setting priority targets as well. And what we mean by priority targets is, for instance, um, let's say this here. Well, let's say that plane, for instance. So we've got the plane up over there. Uh, we we want to We want to set that as our priority target. Control. Doing the computer. So effectively, you select what you want that to be. So X in the number will select that priority target. And that should come up. So, for instance, this boat here, we should be able to set our priority targets with um, our secondaries, our mains, and things like that. And it should actually have a symbol come up against it. Uh, for some reason, there's no symbol. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Um, anyway, range finding. This is what we're all here for. So, <clears throat> Alt 2 to switch to our secondary guns. And we're going to range find for this destroyer. So, first of all, once you actually click on the vehicle, so just a, a cruiser there and we'll go back to the destroyer, you'll see that it's measuring range. Now this will give you the the measurement of how far away it is. And you also see that green symbol, that green circle, and that's effectively where your guns are going to splash down at. So you can see when I move it closer in, you can see that that's moving towards us. So that gives you a bit of an idea of where you're shooting. So if you're blind firing, for instance, we could go, yeah, that looks about right, and blind fire before we've measured. We'll send out some shells, and we might get some hits. We do indeed. So that's great. We get a we get a hit. We can also, if we go into controls, we can also set the ranging shot. I've got it as middle mouse button, and this, in theory, should help us actually range a little bit quicker for the. Um, 
for the actual uh, ranging section because what it does is it measures the splash of the water next to the ship and it will give you a better ranging. So when you fire your middle mouse button it will generally send it out of shell. I might not be doing this if I'm using... there we go because yeah it sends out the main caliber shell. So when we send one of those out as you can see, which, uh, guns are not on target yet. Ah, waiting for guns to turn on a battleship. Not easy to do. Okay, so we'll wait for that to happen. Hopefully we'll have things on target soon. Right, let's see. There we go. So we're sending out a ranging so shot. So this is a single shell. So this will only send out one shell from your, your ship. And what this should do is make the ranging a little bit quicker, in theory. Um, and as you can see, the ranging is going up quicker and quicker and quicker. So let's just go back to our destroyer there. And again, we're going to switch back to our secondaries. So we're going to measure our range for it once more. So again, it's ranging. And you can see the, the number just below your crosshair is where your gun's set. So that's where your gun's are going to fire. So if we shoot here, it will be 4.46 kilometers. So it'll be shy of the ship. So you'll see the splashes come in. Splish, 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 splish. We might actually get a hit from just R and Jesus. Um, but we've now got the ship ranged. So, first thing you'll notice is there's now a little green arrow pointing down. That green arrow is the centre of the ship. So, if we get that lined up at the centre of the ship and we get the distance set, that should, in theory, shoot us right to the centre of that ship. So, there we go. Shell's going right dead centre. Um, so all of our secondary guns are hitting on the centre there, and this will allow us to shoot at the centre of the ship. Now if you want to shoot further forwards, you can use this to your advantage. You see it's red now, but we can still measure the distance, so we know it's 4.91. And if we fire here, our guns will fire forward of the ship to the bow. If we fire here, we'll be firing at the stern. So it just gives you that option of um, aiming, effectively. It makes aiming a lot easier, and it makes it so you can actually aim it in naval combat, which is a huge, huge advantage, uh, believe it or not. It makes the game much more fun. Let's switch back to the main caliber guns, and we're going to start moving now. So this will take a little bit of time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start aiming at the cruiser. So again, we're going to be measuring range. At the bottom here, you'll see the little green circles, and that's our guns on target. So when this one of those goes green, we're on target. So let's send out a ranging shot and see if that helps us a little bit. You see shell splash in so many times, and that tells you how far away the shell is. So splash it goes. We actually get a direct hit there, so that's a good sign that we're actually right on target. And right now, you can see that because we're moving, the center point now is further back. So... One thing I will do is just lower the um, lower my mouse's sensitivity because this is really tricky to get right sometimes with a very high mouse sensitivity. So we're at 6.63 apparently. And fire off some shells, so we'll fire off a salvo of our shells. And in theory, this should hit the centre of the ship. So here we go, and boom, dead centre. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Faster we go the further back that, that little triangle will go. If the enemy ship is moving, for example, so where is it? We'll find that one. We'll measure that one up. And let's just switch to our secondary so we actually have a chance of actually hitting it because our main guns will be useless at this. So we're measuring, measuring, measuring. Now we're both moving in this respect, so this makes things a little bit more dicey. Um, measuring away, and it's coming right for us. It's coming right for us. Uh, <laughs> this this is not optimal. What are you doing, little tiny boat? Go away. Leave me alone. Don't ram me. No! No! Okay. So, you can see now... Uh, well, we can't really see because we can't actually see the boat. But you can see the, the little red downwards triangle moving. And... Fire. Our guns can't actually hit it because it's effectively stuck to us. Um... But that will allow us to actually aim for it and try and hit it. So it just gives you that little bit more option of attacking. So it just helps you in the fact of aiming and getting in the right direction. 
So that's it. That, that's how you aim in Naval. Now next up I'm just going to show you an example of the difference of having the rangefinder tool and having the um, and having no rangefinder on board and also crew skills as well. I'll be using a destroyer for that one. Oh, finally it's moving away so we can actually get a bit of an example of this now hopefully. Okay, let's uh, let's try this again. There we go. So moving away, measuring distance. Secondary guns should start to actually, you know, hopefully get it on target, at least our rear guns. We should have at least one gun get on target eventually. Still measuring, still measuring, still measuring. Um, but we will get that little red arrow, so you can see there, it's not directly on the ship. We've got some, we've got some target solutions. Our targeting computer's done its job, and we just need to actually have guns that can actually hit it now. So that's the hard part. But it's going to constantly update that range. It's going to constantly update everything. So you see that it just jumps forward. And that's because it's updated its movement, things like that. And again, it changes movement speed, your movement speed, your direction. So the targeting computer will constantly change in that respect. Uh, and just give you those solutions, those, those solutions to fire. So you can actually hit the, the ships you're aiming at. So eventually, we should be able to actually get a gun on the target. If I can actually swing this big old beast around. Sponson mounted guns will eventually aim, I hope. If they want to work. Come on. Why are you not? No, they're still turning. Um, joys of World War One era pre war battleship technology. Not exactly quick guns. Um, again, you see it's changed position. So it's constantly updating you on those things. More modern ships will have this happen at a more modern pace. And they'll also have guns that can actually, you know, follow a fast moving boat as well. Rather than, you know, guns that can't actually bloody aim at them because they're so bloody slow. There we go, we're finally getting some guns on target. Uh, so, if we fire off now, we should be close by. But remember, it's got to update. So we'll wait for that update solution to come in. Just there. Fire. Close, no cigar. And it's just that thing of aiming. So there we go. It, we've got a hit there. We actually killed it. And you just get used to it as it goes on. So yeah, that's effectively aiming in naval. So as I said, we'll switch to the um, destroyer next. And I'll just show you the difference between having a rangefinder equipped and having a crew as well. All right. So, this is using the Carl Gustav um, destroyer. So we've got one vehicle that's ace that has all its equipment and one that is basically stock. Uh, I, I've still got the engine and um, the shells available to me, but I'm using the stock shells for the HE shell. So on the right, you can see the stock version. On the left is the ace version. It also has a crew level of 69, whereas the stock one has a crew of one. And you'll see the difference. Now, the range find difference isn't much. It changes it by about 7%, which, honestly, I didn't really notice much difference. The big thing is it's slightly more accurate. So one of the things I did notice was with the range finder, it was much more accurate for landing shells. Now, I've kept the gun on center mass, and I'm using the APHE for the, obviously, for the, the aced version of the ship. And I'm using HE for the stock version. So if you're going out in a stock battle, then you will have an HE shell and that's all you've got available to you. Uh, once you get the APHE shell, it makes a big difference, as you can see to the damage being done. Um, I found that you can take a ship down much quicker doing it this way, uh, when, once the ship is aced, obviously. It makes a huge difference in that respect and your guns are much more accurate as well. Uh, because your crew's more accurate, your crew reload quicker. You can see the rate of fire is much faster as well, um, and there's less dispersion in the guns. And you will see that we take out the enemy destroyer in almost half the time that it takes for a stock vehicle to take it out. So, there we go, we see a huge explosion of one of the ammo casings for the enemy destroyer, and that ship is going down in a moment. Boom, one dead ship. Next up, we still have the stock version going, and you can see how hard it is. We basically sink the stock 
we sink the enemy via flooding rather than actually destroying it. Now, of course, when you're aiming, you will aim for different parts of the ship. So generally strafe the ship with the shots. Don't just aim for the center. Aim for the guns, aim for the crew quarters, try and take the crew out rather than taking the ship out. But you can see the difference it makes from having a stock ship to an actual, you know, aced ship. And that is one of the big main difference makers. For aiming, it does make a difference as well. It is more accurate. So make sure to get the rangefinder ASAP. Crew skills uh, obviously work on your uh, work on your damage control parties and also reload times and things like that because that does make a difference and you can now see the enemy ship is listing and soon it will be going down anyway i hope you found this information useful i hope you found it helpful if you did let me know below and i will see you all again soon thanks for watching Bye bye